Good morning, church. It is Friday morning. Take your Bibles and let's go back to Acts number, uh, chapter number 23. We're going to be looking at uh, Paul and, again, some of the problems that he has to go through. Now, last time we talked about this, Paul was taken back by the Romans to the Praetorium. That he's, he's back. They're trying to figure out what to do with him. And something happens that is rather odd. Forty-plus men, we're told, and you'll find this in Acts chapter 23, verse 13. They decided to bind themselves with an oath that they were not going to eat anything or drink anything until Paul was dead. And so they plotted together and they told the leadership. And by the way, the leadership was a part of this. The, the, the Jewish leaders, uh, we're talking about the high priest and others, say, well, why don't you ask the Roman leader uh, to send Paul back down again? Tell him we, we, we figured it out. We, we want to have a trial. We, we've got our emotions under control. Uh, bring him back down, and let's talk about this. But the plot was, is on the way down, because he would probably be guarded by four or five soldiers, these 40 men were going to do seduction, if you will, sedition, not seduction, but said that uh, we're, we're going to kill Paul. Well, it says that Paul's nephew, now you get that in verse 16, when Paul's sister's son, okay, he heard about this. I, I don't know how he heard about this, but he heard about this plot. And so he goes to Paul and he tells Paul what's going on. And Paul tells him, you know, you go find the commander. And he tells the guys, the guards, hey, he needs to go find the commander. He's got something to tell him. This young man goes and and tells the commander what's going on. He says, don't yield to them if you, if you let Paul go down. And so uh, the commander did not know what to do, so he said, we got to get him out of town. Uh, we're going to send him up to Caesarea. So in verse 23, he said he called two centurions. And by the way, a centurion is a soldier in charge of a hundred men. And so he called two centurions, saying, prepare 200 soldiers. So get your men prepared, the, the 100 men underneath each one of you, 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen to go to Caesarea at the third hour of the night. Can you imagine that? Oh my goodness, here, what a force and a show of force. I uh, hear this Roman uh, leader is once again protecting a Jewish individual from his own men, uh, from his own people. And uh, it shows you again the seriousness of the situation and how they took sedition in that day. Uh, these men are going to rebel. Now, I, I do believe probably what they did is, I, I can't prove this, is probably that uh, Roman uh, leader uh, said, okay, we're going to send Paul down to you guys. And he also sent some Romans down. And, and they uh, probably was, uh, if you will, uh, a good battle that took place. Uh, those guys, at least, uh, if they kept their fulfilled their vows, they didn't kill Paul, so they didn't eat or sh didn't drink anything, so eventually they died. We don't know what happened to all that, but God just has his way of working out his will and protecting us, and he uses sometimes some of the strangest ways of doing it. Here are the enemies of the gospel, the Romans, the ones who crucified our Lord, are protecting Paul and giving Paul opportunity not only to preach, but to preach to kings, to preach to governors, and eventually to preach to Caesar. So what Lysias does is he writes a letter and he sends Paul with all these soldiers protecting Paul from Jerusalem up to Caesarea Philippi. And he wrote Claudius Lysias, verse 26, to the ex most excellent gov governor Felix. So he's sending him to Felix the governor. Greetings. This man, he's talking about Paul, was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them, coming with troops. I rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman. Now, that's true in a sense, but he got, uh, he's taken a little bit of credit there when he was actually going to beat him. And when I wanted to know the reason they accused him, I brought him before their council. I found out that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but had done nothing that there was nothing charged against him deserving a death or even being in prison. And when it was told me that the Jews lay in wait for the man, I sent him immediately to you and also commanded his accusers 
to state before you the charges against him farewell. Then the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. The next day they left the horsemen there at the barracks, and when they had gotten to uh, Caesarea, then, then Paul was left there at Caesarea. And so we're going to see later on uh, the accusations made against Paul. But what the, the Roman leader said is, is, I'm sending to you, there's really nothing here for him to be charged worthy of death or even to be in prison. I don't even really know what the accusations are necessarily, except concerning their own law and some religious ideas. He said, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send him to you, and then I'm going to send up the Jewish leaders, and they can make accusations against this man, and you can determine what to do with him. Basically, he's saying, I'm a soldier. I'm not a judge. I'm not a politician. This needs to be decided. This is out of my, this is not in my pay grade. And I'm going to let uh, you decide what to do with this man. But I don't find anything uh, wrong with him. And so again, we see God working out his will, even in the midst of conflict and difficulties in strange ways, oftentimes. And, and uh, I'm, I know that each one of us have to go through trials and tribulations in our marriages and our, our families and in our workplace and with friends and there's difficulties from time to time. But it's just amazing sometimes that when we trust the Lord and we pray and we seek the face of God and, and we read our scriptures, God just seems to work all things together for good. And we're going to continue to see that thing played, uh, played out as we uh, very quickly now go uh, we're not going to take much time, but we're going to go through Paul's uh, trials and, and then eventually his shipwreck. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you again that when we go through the difficulties of life, that we have your Holy Spirit to comfort us, your word to guide us. And Father, we have the, the ability because Jesus lives in us to walk with assurance knowing that all things are going to work together that everything's going to be fine because we're walking in the center of your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.